here's what you do not want to do. And I learned the hard way, just about burned the boat down. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. So I'm uh, coming to you from Savannah. I don't know if I haven't really uh, talked uh, or videoed much since I've been down here in Savannah or really much of the trip down. Um, but uh, I'm finally kind of feeling more like myself and wasn't real into doing the video and stuff, you know, right after splitting up and divorce. So um, I've been dating and um, really thinking about which way I'm going with my life and all that. So. Um, Kind of getting back into the swing of things um, but I wanted to give one kind of an update on on where I'm at and what I'm doing and trying to get momentum here ready for sale and and we do have a buyer on the boat so that's awesome it closes in March and it's February so trying to finish up all the projects that I said I would have done before it closes and so the boat is a complete mess I uh, did uh, find when I got down here pretty quickly a dock uh, because one of the things I'm doing is I wanted to work on some of the cosmetic blemishes on the side of the boat um, a lot of the stuff down at, down at the waterline everything was fixed after the hurricane and this boat years ago but some of the uh, there's some blemishes on the upper uh, sides of the hulls here that were pretty ugly and I wanted to fix all that up and now that I fixed all the kind of major stuff there's a couple little places I might still touch up but the biggest place I fixed was right along in here um, there's a, just kind of a big old scrape across the side and it was you probably could find a whole picture of it I don't know it was pretty ugly looking and got that all reglassed and um, I have one more coat of, uh, of gel coat to put on it and and sand it down smooth and that'll be finished right there and uh, a lot of other little areas on here you can't even really tell now it's looking really good um, so that's nice and the other big project I have to finish before the before the boat goes to the new owner is the rewiring of the alternators. These new alternators have been kind of a way more of hell to install than I thought. I thought they would be a plug and play situation and uh, you can see the boat is a complete mess with electrical wire and everything else. But pretty much these alternators required a complete rewire of the boat, including the main cables uh, which I've upgraded to this 3 aught uh, just because the 2 aught that was in here when I first tried them out was getting really warm so uh, and even hot at the at certain places so so the boat is a complete pigsty while I try to finish the electrical and just really uh, anxious to get this boat sold and move on with my life I, I mean, not that I don't love this boat but um, being on it alone um, the pressure of having most of your life savings wrapped up in it and selling it, you know, uh, probably not altogether different from selling a house, except that uh, houses don't, uh, you know, constantly break like a boat does. So it just seems like every time I turn a corner, there's something new I got to fix, repair or whatever. But uh, at least I'm in a beautiful spot. The weather is kind of hit and miss. Today is a beautiful day. It's 70 some degrees and, and, uh, partly cloudy and you know just nice savannah winter but there's been some really cold days and a lot of really wet days and it makes it hard to get any work done and especially with the alternators not connected um solar power is my only power so um, the dock is not connected to anything it's a floating uh it's a floating dock that is not connected currently they're building a brand new marina here and this is one of the remnants of the what was here and so i'm able to use it until they start building the new docks Anyway, so that's kind of an update. Uh, the plan soon is to get the uh, RV and never did sell the RV. I mean, still have it and it's actually here in Georgia. So uh, I'm gonna bring the RV over here soon and start moving off the boat. And then the new owners would like this boat delivered to Charleston, which is a day sail from here, a nice long day sail. So we'll be at some point soon sailing north as soon as we get everything working and everything finished on it. And uh, once it's in Charleston, it's waiting there for the new owners in March, and 
and I'm moving on to the RV and figuring out where I go with my life. But I think um, at this point, I really, really do um, want to be on a boat again. And of course, Resurrection is in Oregon and needs my help desperately. I need to get back to Oregon and deal with Resurrection, finish it, get it on the water, do whatever I'm going to do with it. And that is, you know, it's 3,000 miles away and it's winter in Oregon. So anyway, that's, yeah, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do there. I don't, I don't really feel like Resurrection um, is ready to where I could just go move on to Resurrection, which would be awesome if I could, but it needs so much more work before I feel like I could just move in on it because, and it's tiny and, uh, of course, and uh, not that I couldn't do tiny, but I'm really thinking carefully about maybe buying a little bit bigger boat and maybe here on the East Coast and on the West Coast, I don't know. So that's uh, right now is figuring out where I'm going next. I do want to end up on a boat and the question is, which boat, which coast, where in the world? I mean, who knows? I've um, got a lot of options at this point. So I'm down here uh, in the engine compartment and just uh, starting to wrap up the final installation of these new Balmar alternators and and uh, learned quite a bit doing this and figured I'd share it for anyone else who's wanting to, to install these high output Balmar alternators. and sitting on my Yanmar engine here. This is a 57 horse Yanmar. Uh, it's a 2019 model, so this is a newer Yanmar, but um, some of the older ones require a little more uh, modification. But the nice thing is that the um, the uh, belts on these are a uh, serpentine belt, and uh, and so you don't have to change the belt to install these. These are 170 amp alternators. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'll go through a little of this and uh, show you uh, what I had to do to retrofit this motor with, uh, with these alternators. Here's what you do not want to do. And I learned the hard way, just about burned the boat down. And when I first hooked up this alternator in, in kind of a test run, um, I used a very uh, cheap fuse block and also had very dirty um, cables. And actually, this one's still looking a little rough, but we're about to fix that up anyways. Um, I'll show you how we're going to upgrade the cables. But in testing, I wanted these, you know, this is, these, these were actually pretty solid cables that I wanted to, uh, I was thinking that that would be adequate. And unfortunately, at the connections, the connections, they were kind of dirty, and so they made a lot of heat and melted the fuse block down. And I didn't catch it till it literally melted down. Well, then there happened to be a screw and a wire right here, and it actually started like grounding out against, like found ground at the same time as it was melting down and caused all sorts of problems. Um, so, um, so yeah, this was a, um, a terrible thing. And, and now you can see I put a heavy duty fuse block on here um, and cleaned the terminals, and, and it still gets warm, which is why we're going to replace the wires. But um, so it, the, what we learned is you cannot use the factory cables, even though they're 2 aught cables, um, need to upgrade to a 3 aught cable. It, it's not a huge difference in, in uh, amperage, these 170s, um, you know, the old ones I think were 120s, but the difference is these alternators can sustain a high amperage for a very long period of time, and then the heat can build if you, if you don't have adequate uh, wiring. So, um, so I'll show you how we're going to do that. As far as uh, bolting the alternators on, it's really pretty simple. Um, you can, I mean, you have to take the front cover off the motor, uh, which is simple, and and really just loosen the bolts and and take it off, uh, you know, and take the old one off, and the new one will bolt right on, and you can tension the belt just by uh, by pushing the alternator out and tightening it. So uh, that's not a problem. Um, initially, I wired it to the factory wiring, and so what I'm going to show you that was my test run. We're going to redo uh, we're going to redo this, and I will show you how. Um, we're going to redo that because um, the factory wiring is just not quite up to the standard of how much power these can put out. So we have to completely redo all that. Um, so that's that's what I'll show you when I as I do it. Um, I don't need to show you the whole installation. This is not that difficult. Um, but wiring it up and having it work right and not catch the boat on fire. That's the part that we need to, uh, you know, to be educated on and. Here is the controller for the alternator. Um, this is the uh, 
Max Charge MC618. Um, you definitely need this with the alternator. And then I will go to the other side of the boat and I'll show you. You also, if you're going to have a dual engines like we do on this catamaran, then you need what's called a sender fielder, which these two um, will connect, um, will be connected with a central uh, controller that'll help balance and make sure there's no conflicts or overheating or anything like that. And so you can see I've already ran these wires from the other side. Um, so, you know, I've test run this, but this is not a long term thing. We can't. Um, we can't run both motors safe. Well, we shouldn't run both motors without that center fielder. So that wire, those wires will run over to the other side of the boat where I've installed the center fielder, and I'll show you that. All right, this is going to look like a wiring nightmare. And part of it is that I'm just barely uh, hooking things up and testing them. I haven't tied up any wires or anything like that yet. just wanted to make sure everything works right and, uh, and make sure I don't want to change anything. So... I'll show you though the components that you're going to need. So here's the other controller right here for the other alternator, another max charge. Um, here is the center fielder. Um, that is the uh, that is the device that connects to both controllers and control and controls them um, at the same time if you're going to have two motors running. And then this right here is a charging. Uh, system for your engine battery. So this separates the new alternator from the engine start battery. And so now the engine start battery is only connected. It's not connected into the alternator or the house batteries. It's only connected to this guy. And this guy, by virtue of being connected right here at the fuse, is connected to the house batteries and controls the charge for the lead acid battery and that's your starter battery and since we have lithium batteries on the boat um, as our house batteries um, the voltages are not the same and that way you don't have any problems with overcharging this guy or or confusing these systems with the voltage that the lead acid battery runs at so um, so I think ideally if you're gonna have one alternator on your on your motor and not two because sometimes you do have two if you're just gonna do one this works fabulously and honestly um, I think one is the way to go. This, um, you know, this is a it ends up being a lot simpler way to do things if you already have, you know, your diesel engine, you know, boat engine. You want to get a uh, high output alternator, and you can just replace the existing alternator in the same place, and especially using the same belt in this case. Oh, geez, I mean that um, that's a lot better than I think trying to convert and mount another alternator on here. So here you go. This one now I have updated to the heavy gauge wire already. And so I'll see if I can't figure out how to go through with you all the changes I had to make and make it make sense. Okay, so one of the first steps uh, to properly install this is that the factory connection to the alternator runs down these two fuse blocks on the side of the motor. And so the first step is going to be to remove that. Um, we're no longer going to be connecting um, to the uh, <clears throat> to the system this way. So we're going to take both these terminals off, the one running to the starter and the one running to the alternator. And I'll and then we're going to have to redo. There's a split I'll show you this once I get it off. But, um, there's a, another wire that runs down from here and powers this fuse block below. And so we'll have to, uh, when we disconnect here, we'll have to recreate that connection to that lower fuse block. Um, so we will be getting into there also. But first things first is remove this stuff. Take this wire off and we'll just build a new single wire. Okay, then we'll make a new wire to 
connect from there to the lower fuse block and this upper one is not going to do anything anymore. I was able just to make a new wire using the old wire. I just cut it off and just put a new terminal on it. It'll uh, be the right size uh, to replace where it did hook on and uh, the other side's already there and so just um, put the uh, same black covering on it up and I put a little electrical tape to keep it on there and put it right back in place. Okay, so I just put the new wire on right here. It's kind of a overkill bolt here for this tiny little thing, but let's uh, get it on. Okay. I'm going to leave this purple one on here just because no uh, reason to put the trouble taking it off and if everyone, anyone ever wants to come back and do something different here to put the old original stock all turned on or something like that then this will all still be here. So I'm just going to put it in here and cover it up. that is all finished and we'll move on. So let's talk about um, the, when you have a, a factory fuse block in here. You still have the two wires um, and I'll explain where they go. So um, the uh, one of these two runs to the main bus bars for the boat for your house bank, house battery bank. The other one runs to a uh, master shutoff switch and eventually down to your 12 you know, your uh, lead acid battery and so um, this guy is going to become obsolete and, um, and then this guy we're going to pull out of here and replace with the new wire because um, and I've already traced this in the past that's how I know it because this one is um, connected to the house battery bank still, and we don't know for sure where it ties in there, um, the house bus bars on on the boat, um, then obviously it's still hot. And so I'm gonna, as soon as I for sure know which one it is, I'm gonna disconnect it. Uh, I could shut off power to the entire boat, of course. Um, it's not, you know, if I wanna be really safe, but for now I'm just gonna electrical tape the end of this thing up really good so that it can't spark or do anything. And then, and then, um, work on tracking it, tracing it down through the boat, and then disconnect it on the other end and, and then we'll be completely safe. Okay, so I'm just um, routing this new 3 aught cable, and this one is running down and right back to this alternator now. So we're going to have a direct connection from the alternator, and I'm going to get it all tied up here, but come around to this fuse, and then Here's where we'll connect the brand new 3 aught cable that's going to run directly to the house battery bank. So, pretty simple. Uh, one thing I overlooked initially, um, this little wire right here powers um, part of the ignition and the fans uh, and on the other side the um, lets the uh, windlass operate. So, um, so be aware that you might have to uh, connect something like that to power when you take out the old stuff. And here's the new 3 aught cable that I've pulled down through the boat that's going to hook up on the other end to the main bus bars. Um, so it's not hooked up yet, I don't, so there's no power to this, but I can start getting kind of things in place here. And then I have to use a lot of wire ties to tidy all this stuff back up. But... Oops, I'm going to get this guy on. So anyway, I'll... To get things in place anyway and then we got to get the 12 volt battery charger in or the lead acid battery charger in here uh, and get that wired in too because we've disconnected that from any sort of uh, any sort of way to charge at this point so we're uh, making some progress here the original wiring harness that comes with these alternators, um, when you're going to use a center filter and you're going to do two motors, you pretty much just don't use that, cut that off and 
when I originally set this up, I tested it with just the one motor, and so I have all these wires running from the alternator, or not all of them, but a couple extras, and I don't know if I'm gonna mess with it right now. It's not hurt anything. I'm just not gonna do anything that hooked up on either end. Um, but I do have all the wires now uh, that run to the various places they're supposed to go, and it's might look a little complicated, but they give you these great little pictures with your alternators, and this is the one for the center filter, so it, um, you know, it really is pretty simple. Um, it shows you where everything should be running and in a pretty simple layout. And you still have to read the instructions and make sure you do it right. I mean, you do need these fuses in here. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm just getting everything together here, figuring out how it's gonna go, so I'm gonna screw these on like one on each side right here and um, you know zip tie all these wires up where they go and the whole nine make sure everything's tight I haven't you know, I'm still just get through with sure I got everything accounted for here and then we'll start tidying up so getting super close to finished with all this okay so we're uh, here in the port side rear of the boat Got this heavy cable run almost all the way. The main bus bars are right on the other side of here. And the old one was connected right down here. You can see the new one I've already ran, so I'm just gonna shove that guy through and bolt him on. And everything else is looking really good. We're just about ready to test everything out. Okay, uh, she's bolted on there. And so, um, Left one is port, right one is starboard. Um, you can tell which ones are the new fat cables. Other than the ones running to the batteries, those are 4 out. So those are the only other things that are larger in here. <laughs> 